William Lloyd Garrison felt that he was destined to do great things, but he had no idea how to get there. In 1828, he was 22 years old, newly arrived in the city from his hometown of Newburyport. William Lloyd Garrison was an uh, impoverished northerner who'd lost his parents when he was young, um, and he came across the issue really by chance and, and worked very hard for for 30 years, published a paper almost every week by hand himself to, to fighting against slavery. The entire narrative of his life is surprising. He, he, um, he was on the outside always. He came from uh, very little. I eventually apprenticed a, a print, um, printing press and uh, really had a talent for typesetting. William Lloyd Garrison's argument was always that you had to change hearts and minds, that if you just change the laws, it's, it's not actually going to change anything fundamentally. And as it turned out, the end, of, the end of the abolitionist era was they did away with slavery. They changed the laws, but they hadn't changed hearts and minds, really. And what the civil rights era does almost a century later is they change hearts and minds. And I think it's a, it's, it will always be a relevant story because cause what the abolitionists did uh, only 50 years after the birth of the Republic was they held out a vision of a more perfect society. My dear Mr. Douglas, join me. I urge you. You have a gift. <sighs> Sir, you really do. <laughs> you flatter me. No. No, I don't. Garrison was a mentor for Frederick Douglass and, and loved him dearly, I think, like a son. And then Frederick Douglass um, went his own way and, and, and came to disagree with some of Garrison's ideas and philosophies. And it was incredibly painful for Garrison. And they had a very public um, rift and a, and a big argument um, publicly um, that was very painful for both of them. And it's this kind of um, intersection of the political and the personal that I think makes this story so compelling. The great kind of uh, genius, the simple genius of what Garrison did was that he um, put himself in someone else's shoes. He, he saw uh, very early on uh, that there was no difference between any man and himself, that there were, you know, a man was a man. And um, he, he took the issue of uh, abolition entirely personally because he just said for a second you know imagine yourself in the shoes of someone who's enslaved and it all just kind of was completely simple to him uh, from there.